Hi everyone, welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel, Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am your host, Halal, and as always, I'm here to serve you. My goal is to bring on amazing people who can help us further learn whatever we need to learn in order to accelerate our lives, our businesses, and our careers. And let me start by asking you this question. When was the last time that you got a chance to jump on a call with somebody who's created multi-million dollar businesses? Somebody who was named as the top 50 must follow women entrepreneurs for 2017 by Huffington Post. And somebody who's actually a best selling author. Because today I'm actually blessed to have somebody like this with me, Heather and Havenwood. And I am super excited for this conversation because it's gonna be awesome. Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. And first of all, for the sake of total transparency and uh, you know being open, we tried to schedule this twice before and it didn't work out, okay? I screwed up and I, I actually owned up to that. Heather very kindly was still willing to do another uh, call. So here we are doing this one, but I just wanted to be upfront and transparent to say that I messed up the last two times. So apologies, Heather, for that, but I'm glad that you're here now. Thank you. You were a bad, bad boy, but you cleaned <laughs> it up, so it's all good. Awesome. Right, Heather, you have done so much. I mean, this is ridiculous. You actually have created multi-million dollar businesses. You are a best-selling author. You were named the top 50 must-follow women entrepreneurs in 2017 by Huffington Post. You have your own radio show called The Win, where you uh, interview very very successful entrepreneurs and share their stories and their journeys and you are also an expert on uh, chatbots and digital marketing and all sorts of other awesome stuff I'm, I'm wondering how did this all came to be because I know you started in corporate America but now you are a very very successful entrepreneur so tell us the story how did that happen you know I <laughs> Similar to most people, I think, where you, for myself anyway, I was taught that I was to go into corporate America, right? I make them a lot of money, and they gave me a little, and then we're like, we're good, right? And I actually started in sales at the age of 25 in B2B sales, business-to-business -business sales, and it was quite interesting because I wasn't taught sales. I was literally given a desk and a business card and a yellow pages and said, go, and I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, all I knew is I had a quota, and if I didn't hit that quota, I'm out. I'm out of a job, right? So I was like, I was determined because the only other job I knew I could get was probably a waiting tables, and I knew that wasn't uh, what I wanted to do. I didn't really have like a resume that I could go to the next company and really figure this out. So I had to, you know, literally follow what everyone was doing big boys because everyone in my um, office was all men except the only women in the office were what I call customer service girls and then me. So I had to really learn how to play with and learn beat the boys at their own game by kind of watching what they were doing, but then beat them uh, because, you know, be smarter than them. So I was number one in the country my fourth year there, which in B2B sales, that was a long time. We always say, don't be friends to the person next to you in a desk because it's a three, like, three month, 90 minute rotation because no one ever stays. But so four years was considered really senior there. Um, and I was in one in the country and then I get my pat on the head, you know, like, congratulations. Um, and I was super excited and I thought this is the beginning of my career. And then I applied to go to what I call top, top level corporate and headquarters and they denied me. And then the next week I got fired. And so it really threw me. I didn't know what to do. Um, and I, here I am, thought I was successful doing what I was told being a good little girl, making a lot of them money, and then I get fired, and I didn't get hired to the next, like the next level, my promotion. So that's kind of how I ended up being an entrepreneur. Is I had to sit back, and all my friends were saying to me, um, "Just go get another job," and I just was like, "I don't want that. I'm not sure what the hell I want, but like I don't want that, right?" And that's kind of what happened. So, and then I can kind of go into like the exact moment. Like there's an exact moment where it shifted, but I want to give you a chance to talk. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And this is something that maybe a lot of people can relate to where they are working in a normal nine to five job and yeah. they are in that kind of routine of 
every single day, going to work, coming home, and then doing whatever it is that they do. But they have further aspirations. They want to do more. They want to achieve more. They want to make an impact. And some of them are actually considering maybe going down the path of entrepreneurship like you did. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not sure where to start. So where did you start, Heather? How did you learn about well, entrepreneurship? Well, I was... So there was a moment, right? And I think that most entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship finds them. I don't think they go seek for it, in, generally speaking. I think mm -hmm. most entrepreneurs I know are 100% unemployable. I am 100,000% <laughs> unemployable. Like, I don't do well in that space, right? I've tried over the years to kind of what I call go back or oh, now it's time to go back. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's not my cup of tea. I don't like it. My sister, on the other hand, she freaking rocks in that environment. Like, she kills it. And, like, good power to her. So I think that, and a lot of people do. And so I just say, like, it's not genetic. We both came from the same household. We both have master's degrees. We both, like, are educated. You know, we both have views, same particular views. I think it truly is a personality in some level. So what happened is I was sitting there, with a girlfriend of mine who just gotten married, this is like um, 01, this is right before, or no, maybe 2000, year 2000, it was before 9-11, and I'm sitting there watching an infomercial that her husband was clicking on, and stopped in this infomercial, and this infomercial was profound, it just kind of had this dude like staring at the camera, and was like, do you want to control your life, do you want to make more money, and I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> so... I'm over there like, yeah, you know, and my girlfriend's husband's getting a beer and I'm writing down the information because the guy says, come to our seminar tomorrow at one o'clock at this hotel in the Dallas area. And I'm like, you know, writing down all quiet. And so I lie and told my girlfriend I was going back to Houston and I lied and I went to this event and it's a hour and a half presentation where you sit down and you basically get pitched to and the pitch is basically own your own business control your life learn how to buy and sell houses and buy and sell notes come to our three-day seminar that's happening next week for three thousand dollars and i'm like mm -hmm. i'm unemployed at this point and i'm like i don't have three grand and then and this is really great for you because you know your show's about hustling right yeah and i think that every entrepreneur truly is a hustler they, hus they know how to make stuff happen. There's a difference between line and hustling. There's a huge distinction. So here's a moment where I hustle. So I'm sitting in this seat, and I really want this. And I don't have three grand. And the guy goes, but for your spouse, it's a thousand. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So I nudge the stranger next to me, and I'm like, yo, can I be your spouse? And he's like, sure. Right. So we go to the back of the room. And I'm right, giving this guy my, you know, giving them my credit card, different last name, different address, no ring. I mean, and I'm like, I'm his spouse. Like, look, everyone there knows we were lying, right? Right. But people in the back of the room were like, "You're hustling. We'll take your money." But we like you. We like that. There's something different with you because we all kind of knew we we're all lying. It wasn't like this big crazy lie. It was like. They knew if they, they, if they pushed back, that I, I would be out. They knew that I'd be like, I don't have the money. So they said, we'll take your grand, and yeah. we'll see you in a week. And basically, that's what happened. The people in the back of the room, the people running the event, noticed that and said, hey, what's your deal? I ended up working, moving to, from Texas to Orlando, knowing no one, living in my, my car, like just driving there like two months later after 9-11, living in this one-bedroom apartment in traveling with that that I did in Dallas three months earlier. That is how I ended up being an entrepreneur because when you start traveling the country, saying the same thing over and over again, and teaching people how they should start their own business, you start to like be in that world and believe it yourself and start doing it yourself. So I started a business on the side buying and selling notes at the time. Right, right. Wow, that's amazing story. That's such an amazing story. And there's this really powerful it's message so about, sorry? It's the hustle. Like, that's the piece I really want you to get. Like, it's the hustle, you yeah. know? Like, I think entrepreneurial. How to, like, make shit happen. When someone's like, oh, we can't do that. I'm like, you know what? You do it now. You ask permission later. Mm. You know? And I knew when I went to the back and I gave her my credit card that had different last name and different address. I mean, I kind of had this, like, 
I'm the spouse, yeah, right? And they were like, yeah, spouse, I got it, you know? We're like, okay, you know? <laughs> but you made that's it happen. Of- you made it happen, and that's what matters. Yeah, I think that's what really matters. I know so many people that when I talk to them, they can tell they're not hustlers. I'll say, well, just do this. I go, but but they said I can't. I don't care what they say. You just do it. Well, what if they get mad? They might get mad. Are you going to go to jail? Well, no. Okay, well, then move on. Like, maybe you just say, oh, sorry about that, or are you sure? I mean, it's, it's the rebels that have caused things to happen. I just learned today that we would not have an air force of our country if it wasn't for a rebel. The guy's escaped me the name, but the guy I was being interviewed by earlier, he said it was because this one guy believed that the Navy was not enough and that he needed air force. And so he did this thing, got court-martialed, he sunk like a huge ship. But because of that guy, we now have the air force. It's the rebels. You've got to be able to allow yourself to be a rebellion. I think for me, I have a hard time not being a rebel. Like, that's my problem. Like, I'm more like, I go in and, like, shake the China cabinet, you know? Uh, So that's why I don't do well in corporate America, because they want me to, like, fit in a box, and I don't like that. Awesome. And and you know what? I think a lot of people in the audience might be able to relate to that. Like, they have this urge that's building up inside, and they want to go and create something and make an impact, but they're holding themselves back. So... Right. How do you actually create the mindset where you stop letting your limiting beliefs hold you back? You talk about being a rebel. You talk about having a personality where you go in and shake the China cabinet and you don't fit in the corporate world. So what what did you do to develop the mindset or yeah. what what kind of personality traits allowed you to go ahead and So you would th- knowing me now, most people think um you must have been a rambunctious child or something. <laughs> I wasn't. I was taught very young to uh, be a good little girl and Baptist. So one of my friends called me Baptist girl gone bad. That's a little more accurate. Um, you know, very Southern Christian world, you know, and I was not taught to be a rebel at all. I was taught the opposite, you know. So how this happened, I do not know. Um, I, honestly, I think part of it was I had to step into my own power and I had to learn to either I go after it or no one else is going to give it to me. I didn't have anyone giving me, you know, spoon of anything. So I think that that kind of um, energy was apparent around in my 20s. But honestly, nowadays, I feel like it's all in the mindset. How do I do that? Um, we all have our demons. And I think that the demons are designed, really, what I call demons, the other side of us, is designed to keep us safe. They're designed to keep us small, but they're more importantly designed to keep us safe. That's really the word. And safe means out of harm, out of danger, consistent in the box. And you have to be aware that every entrepreneur I know, all of them, has those kinds of experiences in their head. The difference between... An entrepreneur who is successful and one that's not is one one chooses to listen to them and the other person tells tells them to shut the hell up. You know, I know that you're afraid, got it, shut up. I'm doing it anyway. Or I know you're afraid someone's gonna yell at us, who cares? I'm, I'm going anyway. I know that you're afraid to make this phone call because you're scared that they're gonna say to you, I hear you, I'm making it anyway. So that's really the process. I still deal with my own stuff. I'm constantly still dealing with my own stuff in my own head. I don't think I'm big enough. I don't think that I'm very successful. When you tell me your bio, I don't think that's very impressive. <laughs> I'm like, I'm always to me striving for more because I want to help more people. I want more for my life. I'm constantly on that. Is that healthy? I don't know. Who knows? But I think honestly that it's, it's real. You know, it's real. And as a woman, more than a man, I for myself get really tired of hearing about or show or seeing women who are laying around on white couches and acting like entrepreneurship is so damn easy. It's like, it's not, you know, it's like not. So it's not the easy road. If you want an easy road, but by for all means, just go get a government job. It's way easier. You got holidays off and shit, you know. So 
um, I think part of the process at Entrepreneur is hustling and understanding that it's just one big hustle. Yeah. And that's, that's the message behind Hustle is for Life as well, that in every area of your life, whether that's relationships, finance, your career, your job, your spirituality, your health, you have to hustle to make things happen. You have to have something. Yeah, I think it's a really good word. I like that. You know, female hustle or the hustle. Um, people said to me, "Well, you you must you lied to get your way there." I mean, there's a difference, right, between hustling and and lying. I, I don't condone lying. But here's another example that I hustled. So I was at Small Business Expo, uh, speaking around the country last year. And even though I got there and I had a breakout room. To me, I see it's like, that's just half the battle. It's not the job of the conference to get people in my room. It's my job to get people in my room, right? And so I'm like, if I'm going to fly all the way to New York, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, like I'm going to make sure there's some peep butts in my seats, right? So I'm out there hustling. I'm literally going through the conference. Hi, hi my name is Heather. I'm speaking at 2 o'clock at the 5432 room. You should come. Hi. You know, I'm literally hustling from the moment the conference starts till I got to speak. Right. And every single time people come to me, the conference would go, how did you do that? You had more people in the room and you're a newbie with us, like with us, mm. you're a newbie with us that, how did you do that? I'm like, cause I hustled and it got to a point where the main speaker, the main guy who'd been spending all this money started coming into my room to try to take people from me right and I, I wow. would of course you know kill that off but <laughs> it's a hustle people are like how did you do that I'm like I walked around the conference I'm not gonna sit there and go well I'm a speaker at the conference and people should just come to my room I'm like uh-uh I literally was knocking on doors walking up to strangers cold calling hey I love to see you in my, I'm talking about, I'm at the room, 543, just go here to the, I'll see you there, next, next, next. I would have like 150 people in my room, and they didn't know who I was. So hustling truly is a skill. It's a skill that you have to just own and not be embarrassed by. And my, you know, my cohort dude who, who was the headliner, by the way, wasn't getting as many people. I'm not the headliner. I'm just like one speaker of like 20 he was the headliner, and he's like, how is she getting so many people in her room? And the conference people are like, oh, we're well, not doing it, and we don't know, right? And I was like, because I hustle it. Like, I am a hustler. I'm going to get butts and seats like that. So I think it's a really important skill set. For the audience right now, I want you to think about all the times where you have held yourself back or where you had the opportunity to take action and you resisted or you hesitated. And what, how would it have been different if you hadn't? There's a really strong message here, guys, what Heather is trying to convey to us, and I absolutely believe in the message, and it's the fact that you have to constantly take action. You have to keep your finger on the pulse to make sure that you create extraordinary results in your life because they're not going to happen by themselves. Awesome. Right. So, Heather, I know that you are massively into chatbots. And to be honest yeah. with you, I don't know a lot about chatbots. I don't know how they work or what I can use them for, why they're good for my business. And I'm sure there are lots of other people who have very similar sort of questions. So can you tell us a little bit about what are chatbots and how we can actually use them to grow our businesses? I'm gonna speak about Facebook chatbots. So let's just like segment that out. All right, so back in like 2016, uh, Facebook saw a couple things. One, they wanted to become number one on business pages. That's kind of one of their goals. Number two, they saw that uh, Facebook itself, like Facebook at Facebook, Facebook, the news feed, right? The people on it were like this, and the Messenger app was like this, but it started to cross. So what that means is, is that more people were on Messenger than they were on Facebook. So you and I might think, well, it's all in one. In their view, they have three products. They have the advertising, they have Facebook, and then they have Messenger. There are three products to them. So they thought, well, that's interesting. There's more people on the Messenger app, Messenger side, than there are on the news feed. So the more eyes on the Messenger. So how can we, what can we do here? So the first thing they did is they said, well, we don't know, because we're not creative. 
anymore. So we're going to open up our API. We're going to tap some people in San Francisco and go, our API is open. Now go like figure out how to make this profitable. So that's what's happened. So there's like mini chat, chat fuel, chat people, tons of them. And since then what's happened is they've all been able to figure out ways to auto respond, broadcast, um, communicate, uh, they've been focusing on how do you ask people questions to to sift and sort the potential customer or br- with the brand. There's all these different things, but the the underline of all that is something like H to H principle. So the more high tech we go, the more high touch we want. Okay, and there's been studies that millennials and younger already have this assumption that if they start interacting with a brand or a company, that the brand should already know what they want, which is a new view because in the older demographics like myself and whatnot, we kind of have a view like our job is to go and like give them our information and like help them. But younger is like, no, you should already like have all that and like you should know what I'm thinking. Right. And that's where chatbots come in. So it's basically the Facebook Messenger chatbot. And nowadays, you'll notice, if you go to a fan page or business page, and there you click on it, and then it interacts with one of the providers that you select, $150 depending, and it interacts and becomes like an autoresponder or an email sequence or a conversation. And this is really complex, because, but it's simple. Because at the end of the day, it's a sifting and sorting sales process. But also, what's cool about it is that you can start asking people questions like, hi, thanks for being here. Are you a uh, consultant, coach, or author? Author. Great. You're an author. Well, here's some products we have for you. Right? Or if you're a, like a weight loss company, are you looking to lose uh, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, or over 50? Great. Here are some products that might serve you. I mean... Basics, but this is so empowerful that because we now get all this data, it's really the data. So I mean, I go on and on about it, but the, the the baseline is that if you're a small business owner, if you're an e-commerce company, if you have a brand, you want to be on chatbots. You want to select. There's a couple. I'm going to name them off. I have no affiliation. Mini chat, chat, pu- chat, chat people, chat fuel, and drift. These are just a couple. There's many more. There's over 200 at this point wow. that can help you. Uh, you know, with the process, but, and that's a third party entity that Facebook doesn't own, but they've opened up their API to these companies and they've got permission, right? So that that's the deal. I mean, that's kind of the overall arch. If you have any questions, <laughs> it's a lot there. Yes. Yes. And it's good to know that there is this new technology that's coming up, um, which is opening up more doors for people for their marketing and to, actually interact with the potential customer in a completely unique way. So how, how do you think these chatbots will evolve in, in terms of into the future? Is there something that we need to be looking at the, the current trends that will, that will help us m- maybe in a sense, I guess, predict where, where the future will go with chatbots so we, we can kind of um, anticipate how to get there quicker? Yeah, so they're not going away. They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, if you're a small business owner, if you are a local business, if you're a brand, like you do not overstep this. This is not going. It's like email. People are like, oh, I'm ignore email. Like that's ridiculous, you know. So, uh, like someone said to me once, well, I don't have Messenger, and I said, well, then that that to me is like saying you don't have an email address. Like that's just crazy. You know what I mean? Like, well, I I got rid of my Facebook. I'm like, well, good luck with that. I mean, that's literally like saying, I no longer have an email address. Mm. That is how much level this is changed the playing field. It used to be that you could live your life without a Facebook personal page. It's totally possible. Not anymore, because what's going to happen is, and it's already happening, is local businesses are saying, why do we have a freaking website? What's the point? We'll just do our URL, you know, localdentist.com, and it redirects to their Facebook. Facebook business page, which has their hours of operation, a full message integration. They don't have to pay for it. It's free. They have their phone number. They have the directions, the map there. And then they have, oh, by the way, we're open tomorrow for Easter or whatever. And the latest thing, they don't need a website anymore. Mm. 
-hmm. And that's what's happening. And so it's happening more and more and more and more with different niches. And that's what Facebook wants, by the way. That's what they want. That's kind of the intention. So it's not going away. So buckle up your big boy pants and get yourself a Facebook page (laughs) or Facebook, you know, account and make sure that you understand that chatbots are now the way of communication tools. So email is awesome still. It's not dead. I do a presentation about it's dead, but here's the difference. So if you send me an email, you personally, I might respond to it, but if I get an email blast from your company, I might click on it or open it, but I most likely won't respond to you. Right? Yeah. But if I get a if I get a message in my messenger from you or your business, I'm trained to respond to the message. And that's where that conversation piece, that human to human. And the more high tech we go, the more high touch we want. So it's not going away and you know, there's there's bot academies out there. We actually build out build them out. And uh, yeah, so it's not going away. It's definitely the hustle. <laughs> Perfect. So, Heather, where can people go to find out more about chatbots? Do you, do you have any uh, resources that you can share or any, any place that they can go to find out more? They can go just go check my bot, AskHeatherAnn.com. What's going to happen is, no matter if you put that on your in your phone or your desktop, what's going to happen is it opens up and redirects to a messenger uh, campaign and you'll see me pop up and I'm like hey how's it going and we had this conversation with you and I'm going to ask you questions I'm going to ask you who you are and what you do and like have this whole interaction with you so I can best serve you but I want you to go there so you can explain it and you can see it and you can feel it and you go oh that's really cool or, oh I hate it or this is weird or whatever you want to say but go to ask ask heather h-e-a-t-h-e-r a n n dot com. That's askheatheran dot com. So uh, I'm thinking about changing that URL, but at the same time, right now that's that's what it is right now. And um, I say go check it out, experience it, and then for yourself, if you start to go to local businesses and local brands pages, click on that messenger and start talking to them. I mean, I've been looking at right now a new uh, fitness place, and I went on Facebook and looked at all these new places, and I started kind of testing people. I go to the messenger app. I'm like, hey, I'm interested in whatever. And if they didn't get back to me, I'm like, okay, they're not looking at, they're not, they're not on the cutting edge, you know? And I had a company go, oh, hey, they respond to me within seconds. Like, oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah, we have these classes. Love to have you. I'm like, awesome. So that's what people want. People don't want to get on the phone. They want to have that instant gratification of, um, of more of a chat experience versus a phone. Well, thanks for sharing that, Heather. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah perfect. Now, you also dealt with a lot of sales and you obviously have scaled multiple million dollar businesses yourself. So can you give us some ideas, some maybe insights into how we can tell the story of our business in a way that will directly relate to people, that will capture their emotion and they would want to engage with the business? Okay, so I call that selling through storytelling, um, and I do a whole presentation on that. And I don't try to, uh, you know, create some structure that I made up. I use a very time-tested structure that has made billions of dollars off that structure, and that's called Hollywood. So Hollywood uses a six-stage plot structure. Um, it's basically they call it the hero's journey. Right. And every successful movie, action, comedy, drama, whatever, follows the hero's journey plot structure. And the moment that it tries to steer away from that, some writers like, no, I'm going to steer away from it. I'm going to try something new. Right. Every time they do that. It doesn't do well in the box office. We as humans don't like it. And that's because we were taught an extremely young age. You know, I'm thinking of the Bible. I mean, the Bible, you can open up the Bible, like it or not, agree with it or not, in alignment with it or not, and you can understand the story because it's actually created in the hero's journey. It's the storytelling model. 
right? So that's why we can read it and get it and understand it, not like it or not like it or agree with it or not. That's different, but we can understand it, right? So hero's journey, if you can take your business and your what you guys do and who you are and lay it on top of the hero's journey or the six-stage plot structure, you're there because that's the selling process. People will become enrolled into your story and that's where they connect with you, relate to you, like you or not like you, and then want to be or buy your product or service. Now, what's interesting about the like part, okay, so Howard Stern, he's a big radio guy, right? <clears throat> they found out, this is years ago, they found out that approximately 50% of his listeners hate him. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Rush Limbaugh, huge here in the States and broad, uh, political political guy. 50% of the, his listeners hate him. Now, that's really interesting because people go, well, you only want to be liked. It's actually in the understanding storytelling it doesn't matter if they like you or are not like you they can understand it and then they can be a listener think of you know christianity okay again all right people who are haters of or not liking of it they still know what it is hmm. because there's they there's a story to understand and then they have a decision to choose to like or not but they still are they still what I call a listener of it. Does that make sense? So the point is, is that you want to say it's not focusing on are they going to like us? It's the are they going to understand it? Do they understand who we are and what we stand for? People who, uh, who hate Rush Limbaugh and they listen to Rush Limbaugh are listening because they like want to hate him even more, right? But they understand where he comes from. So believe it or not, that's actually, there's power in that. Movies are the same way. There's a ton of movies that I can say that I don't like, but I've seen it. Mm. Does Hollywood matter? I gave them my money. It took my money. They took my money. They were happy to take my money. So mm. I think that's the point, is that the storytelling, and I'm going to say it again, it's called the six-stage plot structure. Right. Okay. That's really good to know that there is a structure that you need to follow in how you tell your story. Does it have Yeah, now I'll, here's a warning though. Here's a warning and I, I don't have much time to go. I don't have, I'm not going to have time to go into it. It's going to ruin every movie for you ever, especially like, you know, blockbusters, you know, like Star Wars or something. You'll start to actually see, oh, here comes that part, you know, because they have to, like I said, there was time tested. The ones that follow it are blockbusters. Anytime they try to mess with that, they, you know, it crashes at the box office and all of a sudden they don't get good ratings, you know. So I think that it's an interesting thing, but it will ruin your the movies. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're not again. Well, thanks for oh. the heads up. Thanks for the heads up. At yeah. least at least we can yeah. uh, we can prepare ourselves for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, hope that helps. Six stage plot structure. <laughs> Perfect. So Heather, I know you have created multi million dollar businesses. And for people who are in the audience and they're watching this right now, they're listening to this right now, and they're wondering, I am somebody who is thinking about starting a business. I'm somebody who's got aspirations, who wants to achieve big things, but I have no idea how the heck am I going to get to even my first 10, $10 or 10 pounds. How on earth am I even going to get to a level where I can not just scale one, but multiple businesses to million dollars or more? What message well, do you have for those guys? I mean, so first of all, you got to go through basics. You got to have a product or service. You got to figure out what that product or service is, and you got to figure out, you know, what's the message of the product or service? What's the market you're selling it to? And what's the media you're going to sell it through? That's business. I can just stop right there and whatever. I mean, so you have a product or service, and the product or service has a message that is focused on a specific me uh, <clears throat> market that's going to pay for that, and then you market through a particular media. By the way, for all you millennials out there, I don't know if you know this, but internet is not the only media. There's billboards still that work, and radio, and newspaper, and magazines. I know. 
<laughs> crazy. But it does work still, um, and I think people need to realize that the internet is not the only place media, right? But again, go back to message market and media. I mean, that's that's what I do with my clients. Honestly, you've got a product or service, you sell it to a market, and you have a message around that to help the market buy it via a particular medium. Mm. That's business, and then make sure you profit. Yeah, perfect. So, Heather, in terms of when you started off on your journey, how important was it for you to network and build build up your Rolodex and connect with the people who helped you along your way? Well, at the beginning, it was everything, mainly around a mindset, because I, I can honestly say, I'm thinking, maybe one person. There's no one I know that works for a company, or no one I talk to. I'm sure I know them, they're neighbors. But basis, like there's no one that's in my inner circle or my, what I call it, I have an inner inner circle, inner circle and then kind of a, you know, associates. Anywhere in that space, most everyone is an entrepreneur on some levels, own their own business, run their own business. I think the only one's my sister. But other than that, I mean, everyone I know is an entrepreneur and she really is an entrepreneur at heart, you know, so she's building her other business. So she's kind of an entrepreneur just in a corporate body right now. Um, I, I, I think it's really important to surround yourself with other entrepreneurs. I know that when I first started as an entrepreneur, the um, first couple of years, I lost all my friends. In fact, the people that I knew in corporate America today, I don't know any, more, any of them anymore. I'm not saying you have to do that, okay? I just went into a different path in life, and we just kind of lost touch because I didn't really have anything in common anymore. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of how that works. I highly suggest going to an event go into seminars that are have the same like mind people there. It's really important just to connect. It's not really always about doing business, it's just about understanding their mindset so you can be in the same mindset as them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. when when you surround yourself with the right people, then you you have to kind of make the internal changes, the necessary internal changes to actually keep up with them. Yeah. Yeah, you have to keep up with them or um, like for me, I'm competitive, so I just compete against them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think everyone's different. I don't I don't look at it as I got to keep up. I look at it as, oh, so I was doing something cool doing. Okay, I'll do that too. And I'm going to do it better than you. So that's kind of what I do, right? Chatbots, I interviewed a guy who's super friends of mine. I now work with him, Peter. And I said, this chatbot thing is cool. I want to do it with you. We're going to figure something out. So now I'm business development part business development for his company so I think that, that part of that is is uh it's not keeping up with the Joneses it's beating the Joneses it's like oh if you can do it I can do it too yeah absolutely and that's the hustler's mindset right like you go ahead and you create results yeah you you create results for, yeah you don't wait for things to come to you you go ahead and create results yes Beautiful. So, Heather, this has been absolutely phenomenal. You added a lot of value, and it's uh, it, it's been absolutely tremendous. I had a blast. I'm just wondering how. <laughs> thank you. How how can how can people help you right now? Well, they can go to my chat bot. That helps me because it asks questions, and I want to know what you're thinking as an entrepreneur. Uh, so, go to askheatherann.com. My main website is heatherhavenwood.com. Feel free to check that out. Perfect. And what's the what's the best way for people to reach out to you and and connect with you directly? I know it sounds crazy, but my chat bot right. because that's where I'm at. It's my fan page. So, if you reach out to me in chat bot and say, hey, Heather, I want to talk to you, I'm going to respond. It's not really a bot. You know, I'll be like, hey, it's me. What's going on? What do you need? Tap bot is really the best way to get a hold of me. Perfect. Awesome. And for people in the audience, if any of this resonated with you, I want you to go ahead and take action and reach out to Heather. She has so much knowledge. She has scaled multiple million dollar businesses and she's super, super successful. So when you start the conversation, you know that you're going to find a lot of value in it. And also the fact that I always encourage you to just take action. I mean, just even if you reach out, start the conversation and say, hey, Heather, thank you so much for your time. I mean, you, at least you're taking that action. You're taking the step. You're making stuff happen and results will come to you. I mean, this is exactly what Heather's been talking to us about. The hustler's mindset to hustle, to go ahead and create results, not just wait for things to come to you, but to go ahead and create results. So Heather, this has been phenomenal. Thank you so much. I'd love to have you back for round two sometime. I would love it. Round two, man. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. Well, Heather, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And guys, stay awesome, hustle hard, and I will catch you in the next one.